Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. And of course, I'm Ron. And we are back today for another recap of The Shy. Uh, this is season three, episode 10, and it's titled Want This Smoke. But before we get started on our recap of the episode, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel, like the video, and click that notification bell. And plus, if you have not seen our interview that dropped, with the one and only Luke James and the one and only Jacob Lattimore, who are both stars of this show. You need to check that out right now. And so it was an amazing interview, thoroughly enjoyed it. So like I said, if you haven't seen it, go check that out right now. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into the conversation about this episode because, you know, everything is starting to pick up now. It's like everything's escalating and it's kind of like, you know, Vic is now in the hot seat. That's where it kind of opened up because we were worried about where things were going to go with him. And, and so, you know, he's up there giving his speech, you know, really kind of letting the public know where he stands on things and making mental health a priority. And so he's really doing his thing and making sure that his community is taken care of. But it always seems... Like, just when everything is going right for him politically, it's always a mess from his past that's coming back up. And so we see that the feds are hot on their trails with this car that they found with, I'm assuming that's Q's body in the trunk still. Yeah. Which I was like, that was a huge misstep on their part. Like, they should have got rid of that body a little bit better. I don't mm -hmm. know. What did y'all think about that? Because they said they could still pick up the fingerprints too. I'm like, dang, even that's, after the fire. That's pretty good. Cause I mean, that car was smoked, but you know, they could have buried that body 15 feet deep. I don't know why they left <laughs> the car, but they did. Hey, you know, so you're right. Vic, Vic has, uh, he has a lot to answer to. Mm -hmm. These are the fans. And I think I said in a previous recap that I thought that, you know, he had some things to worry about because I, you know, it, I, I told you my biggest fear was that either he was going to end up back in jail or Emmett was going to be dead. And so. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. And, you know, it's really clear from this episode that Otis is suspicious of him. Like, he's like, did you send him to come shoot me? Like, were you trying to kill me? And then, like, he kind of, like, snatches him up and threatens him and beatins, beats uh, Vic up in efforts to get him to keep his mouth shut. But I'm like, if you want somebody to keep their mouth shut, then that tactic might backfire, which it seems like Vic is like, I'm going to get him. <laughs> I was a little confused, though, with that, that beat down. I mean, typically, when you kidnap somebody like that, you expect a little more you know, trauma on the body, and particularly when, um, when a Vic headbutted uh, dude, I was about to say, you ain't see his eye all lumped up. Yeah, yeah, but that's, yes, that's, I, well, okay, but that, you can get that in a regular fight. But I'm saying you kidnap Vic, and that's all you get from it? Okay, I can accept that. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm talking about Vic. Vic's eye was shut. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can get a... You, look, if you're in a regular fight and somebody hits you in your eye a couple times, it's going to shut. <laughs> but you go through the whole process of kidnapping Vic only to just in my opinion, lightly rough him up. I think it was but, just scare tactics. Yeah, it was. And and Vic is not scared of him. One of the things I thought I saw that was no, he, he's never been afraid of him though. Mm -hmm. He's never been afraid of him. One of the things that um that I thought when he kidnapped him and said, you know, did you send somebody to try mm -hmm. to kill me? I was like, this is big. I don't think Vic would send anybody to do that. Like if he if yep. he wanted to go, he was gonna come himself. I mean, he he did come himself, mm -hmm. and and Bacardi exactly. talked him off the ledge. Mm -hmm. So Vic ain't he's not the type that he gonna send uh, Emmett and, and Rob some amateurs to do his job. He's a real street street dude. So I was just like, I was like, do that to me seemed kind of paranoid asking him that question because I was like, he know himself that um, that Vic. Is not scared of him, and that he would do it himself. He knew the exactly. answer. Exactly. 
he knew the answer to that question. And and I think Vic said something to the effect, if if I came at you, you wouldn't be standing here right now. He sure did. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so it's like this whole situation that they got going on, it's like the the lawyer, lead, played by Leon, uh, his name is Alonzo on the show. Mm -hmm. He tells Vic, you know, if they can't find a way to pin it on Duda, you're going to be next on bat because they, they found your fingerprints. Like, that's a fact. So it's really kind of heating up in this regard because we also know that Quincy, um, the campaign manager, he was kind of letting Vic know that they wanted him to backtrack his vote to defund the police. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ooh, this could get political. Like, you know, when stuff, you know, when people want a certain cause to happen and you are resistant against that, they'll start playing dirty with you. And I'm like, I hope Vic don't get caught up in some mud slinging because he refuses to, you know, turn back on his vote to defund the police. Or they use things to take you down. Like something like this uh, with the Duda thing can be used to take them down. Because I think about like the stuff that's going on, you know, in the news now with like the the former prosecutor, Marilyn Mosby and um, mm -hmm. in Baltimore and stuff. Like, you know, she was, you know, behind trying to prosecute those police for the Freddie Gray and stuff. And now they're trying to send her to jail for like 40, 40 years. Mm -hmm. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I, you know, they use things to try to take you down. Yeah. And I just, I'm worried for Vic too, especially if this becomes public, because then mm -hmm. he might use the trust, lose the trust of the community. They might start yes. side eyeing him like, what? You did yes. what? You're involved in a murder? Yes. Like, like, that's nothing like. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's why I asked the question in the interview. You know, are you still the man uh, uh, to serve as for the job? For the job. I mean, you know, because you got a lot of cleanup, and it appears that you're the only one that can do it. And yet now you got this almost murder charge. You know, that's coming your way. Uh, you know, are you still the man for the council position? And I think that before it gets too heavy and hot and heavy for him, for him, he better make a decision because uh, mm -hmm. it's going to look bad if they have to take him down from his throne. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he might end up having to, uh, to step down mm -hmm. if it gets too, you know, too heavy because if anything, like he didn't commit the murder, but by him not reporting it, they're going to accuse him of being an accessory after the fact. So, Absolutely. It's not looking good for him. So I don't know how they're going to try to spin that, but hopefully Leon is as good of a lawyer as he is an actor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I guess it's uh, it's it's the spin cycle that's got to start happening right now because I, I don't know how you get away with, well, why were your fingerprints on the car? You know, what, you know, did you own the car? You know, what what's, you know, that that's going to be a hard pill to to um, you know swallow yeah i wonder whose car that initially was anyway like is it just like some random vehicle right. that otis got or is it somehow tied to somebody else like what's the right. this paper trail on that it was probably stolen and that makes because it if it's some, if 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 it's somebody you know i don't know where the car came from but that, Vic could try to justify it by saying like yeah i i was in that car one day with my friend if he knows the person who's the owner or something like that, like that's very circumstantial. Mm -mm. Yeah, because you know, the dude on them had the chop shop. Remember, Tip's uh, car got stolen last mm -hmm. season, and Dante had to help her get it back. So they're already in the business of stealing cars. Right. Yeah. So that could be anybody's car. Right. It's probably mm -hmm. already stolen. So you know, it's this is a rough road Victor's about to uh, find himself traveling down. Uh, this is, it a, is what they call a road less travel. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is pretty bad for me. Yeah. And so, you know, it's going to get bad for Otis, too, because I'm looking at this episode and I'm just watching Alicia assemble her team like she is grabbing all of her Avengers together and she <laughs> is putting everybody in place. This so, the Avengers. <laughs> no, for real. She's putting all her. We, we seen her snatch up his dude last season. The guy that's on Otis's uh, from Otis's crew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. got him. She got her son, of course. And now this episode, we see her recruiting two more. 
And I'm like, you gotta know something is up when Alicia is being nice. <laughs> so I like the work that she's putting on Shy because. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I really like that work. I mean, you know, she said I, I, the first question she asked him, you know, so you you served some time, and he said, "Yep." Yeah. And then she asked him another question about you like fixing things, and he said, mm -hmm. "Yep." Yeah. And I'm like, "There she go." There yep, she go. he just don't know what she got in store for him. That all in it. <laughs> she might have a whole lot in store for him. <laughs> Maybe even more than revenge. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, she because. gonna put it. She gonna put it on it now. You yeah, know, you know, you, you, it's what you always say. You know, she's gonna put it on him, so he's gonna feel like he has to do whatever it is she asks him. So I, I don't know. Have, Sean don't have a place to stay right now. <laughs> As you look around, Miss Miss Alicia is. You know, she's fabulous. Miss Miss Lynn Wheatfield is a queen. Is a yes, queen. She is. She's regal and stuff. And then, you know, Miss Alicia is fabulous. She has money, beautiful home. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't Rod, um Shad want to be there? Well, Especially <laughs> after Deja then turned him down again. That's what I said. And he had no place to go. He had, I mean, you know, Darnell tried to let him come in. Jada really ain't feeling that. So you don't want to go somewhere where you ain't welcome. Hey, and Alicia, then, you know, all of his little blind dates that he tried to do fail, epic that was fail. Funny. That was absolutely <laughs> funny. But I love it when Alicia, when he came by late at night and said, uh, well, you know, I can take care of that problem right now. And she says, mm -hmm. in the morning. I'm like, okay. You know what that means. You know what that <laughs> That's means. That's what I said. And to me, I thought a boomerang. I thought about that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I thought of Eddie Murphy. And <laughs> oh yeah, that was. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I was like, mm, yeah, do it in the morning. So and he, the way he looked back when he came in the house, I was like, oh. Mm -hmm. you, you saw that look she gave yeah. at the, she gave to the camera when as she was closing the door. Mm -hmm. like, Alicia. And he looked back over his shoulder. <laughs> her too. That's why I was like, okay, yeah. what's what's going on? That's really diabolical, though, on Alicia's part, though, because she knows he has a record yeah. and she gonna put him in a position to go back now. <laughs> so I'm like, dang, she really like recruiting him with the intentions of thinking like, oh, he got it in him. He could probably help me with Otis. So I'm like, yeah, she she's crazy for that one. <laughs> but she's also offering Emmett money to buy Duda out. And Rob kind of gave Emmett the full warning. That you know that money, she's not just gonna let him slide off with without doing some stuff for her. And he told Emmett, you know, if you don't live up to what you're supposed to do with my mom, you won't have a problem with me. I I didn't understand that, and I I say that because Rob I think understands where his mother's going with this because he knows his mom, and you and Emmett already tried to take out Duda. So if it's a failed process. Now, just because it's your mom that's giving up some money, now Emmett has got to worry about you. So I don't know if I got that right, but I didn't understand the threat. Mm. First of all, anybody scared of Rob? We already saw right. what Rob did. <laughs> we already saw. We, <laughs> Rob is all jacked up and stuff, and Rob ain't no hitter for real. <laughs> so I, I ain't sweating Rob. I, I would be more afraid of Alicia than Rob. Me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially not with the way that Rob got punked by Nook. I Damn. mean, Rob didn't even try to defend his business. He was just like, well, I guess I got to give it up then. Well, he was walking <laughs> on that wooden leg and he only had one good one. So, I, you know, <laughs> at that point in time, Rob, it wasn't much, wasn't much he could do. But then again, like you said, you know, it was like he gave in so easily. And then he's going to come and tell Tiff, yeah, well, I got to do it. And he was real soft-headed about it. I got to do mm -hmm. it. He threatened my life. I'm like, dang, Rob, is it like that? Okay. Well, he yeah. was at that point. And, and like I said, he ain't about that life. He um, or Emmett. Neither one of them are about that life, for real. Mm -mm. Not and, at all. And, you know, uh, I know you're probably going to touch on this, T, but what I was thinking about with Bianca you know, like you said, assembling the Avengers and um, Alicia is hoping that Bianca is going to call in that favor. Yep. Did you see the interaction of how Duda was interacting with her? Now, mm -hmm. does seeing that, does that look like he really trusts her? No. Nope. Like, I was like, 
she ain't she ain't in his <laughs> She, it look due like to her is he's not stupid, and I think no. that's what they fell in the sea. Like he is on. I feel like he's really on to Bianca. He read he's not in his circle of trust, and he read Tracy it. still has his heart. He, mm -hmm. he, he read due to. He, I mean uh, Bianca. He read Bianca like a like a cookbook. I mean it was it was just you could tell in his face what he was thinking, but he yeah. didn't want to give it away. So he gets up and gives her a little kiss. That's a kiss. Mm -hmm. of, that's a kiss of death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, Emmett is really banking on Alicia and Duda taking each other out. He was like, "They gonna burn each other house down." And I'm like, I mean, they're definitely trying. They're going to go at each other for sure. And this feud they have and is only going to heat up more and more. But you know, I think Keisha has a lot of foresight in saying, "Like, I'm gonna support you through this, but I'm not going to jail for you." <laughs> Cause I can see it going left, <laughs> and I was like, "Right on, girl." Because I feel yeah. you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ain't no way I'm getting involved in your mess. And you know, she got all, like I was just looking at just how busy those kids were when Darnell and Jada had taken them. They got a handful of kids, and she's—I mean, she's really stepping into the role as being mom and stepmom to all mm -hmm. those kids. And I think in her mind, she's like, "So they got to have a parent." You know, when Darnell and Jada were talking about like the contingency plans in case something happened to Emmett, I think <laughs> he needs to take that serious. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, he's kind of like happy go lucky this episode. Oh, I'm going to take you out. Let's go clubbing. We we got to live our life while we got it. I'm like, do you not realize there's an active threat to your life? <laughs> you are trying to go clubbing. I, I was like, you guys got bounties on your head and y'all have to club. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, okay. And then what, what was the guy's name that rolled up on uh, Emma and had a uh, drink? Oh, Dante. 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 Now, if I were Emma, that'd be no way, and you know where, that I would trust Dante, let alone drink with him. I Man, I would have been at the front yeah. point, like, we're good. No, you can call us whatever you want. I'm good. There is no way I would have trusted uh, Dante. Dante filed for pushing up on yet another one of oh, this woman too. I'm like, he ain't got no shame. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and never mind the fact that he got his own, you know, side woman waiting on him. Uh, but I think that was Reagan Gomez, you know. It um, was Reagan Gomez. Yeah, 90s it girl. I'm like, that used to, I used to love her on Parenthood. So it was really mm -hmm. good to see her. Um, but I was like, you know, you got this chick over here. She's looking good. And of course she had her own motives too. She was like, look, I got a, the pick of the litter. She was like, look at this. I can have any one of these guys. I was like, Keisha, don't get no ideas. So I, <laughs> right. I started to say no comment. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just like, Dante was filed for pushing up on Keisha, smooth up in Emmett's face like it was nothing. <laughs> but Emma did, did it with Tim. Yeah, Emma did say, roll back now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slow your roll. Come on now. That's what's, yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, I don't know about Emma and Keisha, but if I was going to go out for a day night, it wouldn't have been to the club, number one. But I think they felt the after effects, too, when they went back and laid on that couch. And they was like, you know, you think that, that our fun days are over? <laughs> he said right. He said right. I, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's interesting to me, though. Emma just doesn't seem to he doesn't seem to be afraid of any circumstances or the outcomes that are, are coming his way. I mean, you know, I, I think he even said it at this point with uh, Keisha, you know, um, uh, I'm going to protect you. I'm or it's, Everything's going to be all right. You don't know that, bro. I mean, you know, Duda is not your average guy. And he doesn't do average things. So you've got serious issues with, with, with Duda. And what makes you think, even if you were to take out Alicia, let's just say that he was successful in doing that. Why do you think Duda's going to keep, still uh, keep his end of the bargain with you? He's not. And that's not. why he's being very naive if he believes that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think he believes that. I think ultimately, I, I'll say this, like in the last episode, one of the things he said was that he, when he met with Dude, I forget Dude's name that works for Duda. Um, the, and he said, I'm, I'm tired of running <laughs> and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think if that's partly it. And, you know, when we spoke to Jacob Lattimore and stuff, and when I asked him about some of his decisions he made, even working with Duda, he was like, 
young and dumb. So he's young. And so it's probably naive and stuff. And I also think that in the long run, I think that it's probably going to be a plan that he'll probably have to concoct with um with Alicia. Maybe mm -hmm. you said something um that stuck with me, Ron, when you said something about what well, Duda said, make her disappear. Mm -hmm. Maybe they do make her disappear and make it seem like she's dead. Maybe they concoct something, mm -hmm. you know, and to try to um to play Duda. I, I think yeah. maybe, maybe one of the only ways that he can probably get around this is probably to maybe be straight up with uh with Alicia and and yeah. let her know and everything and then maybe they can backdoor do that yeah and i think it's interesting that they mentioned that alicia has multiple properties you know because of course um rob and and tiff are staying at one of them and alicia has her own somewhere else but i'm just like well you know if she has somewhere to take flight then send her away you know and do that he might not be none the wiser so hopefully that works out for them i'm really hoping that we don't see a lot of casualties uh this season but something happened this episode that got me wondering <laughs> because of course we get the introduction of Kadeem Hardison's character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's the professor that is teaching Lene's English literature class and you know Lene is trying to be a positive influence and in helping Bakari and so he tags along to one of her classes and you know uh the professor he kind of lets them know like you can't be in the class but I'll take you under my wing and tutor you and he tells Bakara, you know, you should take this journal and write down your thoughts and everything every single day. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> is this is this uh, going to be in memoriam? Is this going to be something that, you know, he journals all these things and then he ends up getting killed off. And later on, they go back and find like a memoir of his thoughts. I'm just like, I think that this is kind of memorializing the character. <laughs> Yeah, you right. know, I felt like the, you know, we say, we always say about the redemption arc, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and he is trying to change. And it seems like, you know, Kadeem's character was breaking through. So I, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, oh, protect Bakari at all costs. I was thinking, yes. I was like, something might happen. But here's the thing, though. Um, Kadeem asked him, he said, look, five o'clock, don't be late. And if Bakari running through class, uh, the, the hallway trying to get to his office, and what is he? Late. Now, you can't do that again, my brother. Did you forget that dude I made him sit down and told him not to leave? I get like, it. I his get life that. was but being threatened. My point, though, is, mm -hmm. my point is, you better either try to work something out or let uh, Kadeem know what's really going on in your life, because if you're late oh. again... He's not going to accept that. He seemed to be very, I think firm, very firm. If he's going to build this relationship with the professor, he has to learn he's that if there's trust there. Well, yeah, you know? and, that, that, and I that think that that's has, that has to be built. And he might eventually come out and tell him what's really going on with him. Has to. But until that trust is there, he's not going to say anything. No, because you can get killed. That's that's a feeling to snitch. And he may be a teacher well, of, and sure. stuff. But he if he says, that. tells him what's going on, not and so not so much into what Duda's doing, what Duda's trying to do, but, you know, he did kind of lay the groundwork when he said he was trying to, you know, he's trying to get out I'm of I'm trying the, to you know, save my I'm life. Trying right. to save my life. Mm -hmm. So he's got to start talking on that, on that level so that Kadeem really fully understands that he's not, you know, he's not just somebody showing up late. There, this time was an issue and I'm going to do my best to continue to do what I do, but in order for trust to exist, you're going to have to open yourself. And yeah, and, and it's going to have to happen. That has to happen. If it doesn't happen, I think that then, is. I, yeah, it has to happen. Yeah. And I don't know if um, the professor intends to kind of look through his journaling, if that'll be something that he shares or not, but that might be very revealing too as to what's really going on with Bakari. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I'm hoping the best for Bakari's character, but I don't know. I seen that and I was like, uh-oh. I don't know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I thought it... Oh, go ahead, Tiff. No, I was just going to say, this made me think about, again, going back to the interview with, you know, Luke and Jacob. You know, we asked them for three words, you know, to describe the season. And mm -hmm. they said exhilarating you know, exciting and stuff. And then um, one of them, I think we said sadness. 
So I was like, so when I hear sadness, I'm always like, okay, what what does that mean? <laughs> Is somebody mm-hmm. gonna die? So that you know, yep. But you know, I did think that it was very fitting of them to cast Kadeem Hardison as a professor because we know Hillman grad, you know, Hillman that's grad. his production company, and so it's like you know the Hillman connection having him on as a professor, like oh, that was so fitting. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, so I really enjoyed that. Um, now I wanted to talk a little bit more about this whole situation with Gemma and <laughs> Jake. I was confused because I'm like, didn't Gemma and Jake break up? But then they was staying because you know when when Jake took over Kevin's apartment, he was like, I mean, this is my spot. He wasn't really trying to no, have Gemma up in there. They didn't. But now break she's up. sleeping He's... over. No, no, no. They didn't break up. She assumed that when he said he was getting a spot, she assumed that she was moving in with him. And right. he said, no, this is a bachelor's pad. Right. So so they weren't breaking up. He's saying, like, you have your space, I have mine. So And he wanted to still date her, but he okay. told her she wasn't she moving up in there. Right. You got 40. But she's also gotten super close to Britney. And uh, she seems like she's getting very jealous of Britney having the girl on her lap and everything. And I was like, I mean, it ain't your place to be jealous of nobody that you not in a relationship with. So what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. And Britney told her right on off too. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole lot of conflicts there, right? Because I'm like, you're with Jake. You're, uh, you're taking money from your, your artist. I mean, you know. F and and then also yeah um you're getting kind of romantic with her and jealous and stuff it's a whole lot of stuff going on and then poor mm-hmm. my Aisha over there feeling like she getting a short end of the stick yep yep what about and she we getting know jealous? Basically- what, about she, what about she getting jealous because Jake was um uh in a photo shoot and and uh with Kenya <laughs> Kenya and 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 she's sitting up there catching you know catching this these feelings about that when you sitting there doing your thing with uh Brittany. I, That's what I can say. Meanwhile, she didn't go way further. Way yes, she further. has. And but Jake, but Jake looked like he was he was checking her out. Yeah. And I was, was. like, and Jake yeah. has been Mr. Still Your Girl. <laughs> <laughs> he has been yeah. Mr. Still Your Girl. So I was like, uh oh Papa. I mean I know Papa ain't talking to her anymore, but that is Papa's ex. So I'm like, Jake let me find out that Jake gonna be moving on to her next. She's an yeah, ex. yeah. I she's don't know. Ex. She's an ex. She's open to. She's open. She's wide Listen, open. Listen, guy code. It clearly Dang. is no code. There is no code. Week. No, it is a code. You know, a few months. If y'all ain't dating back in a few months, she's wide open. Well, I don't know. Gemma got to get it together. I mean, we heard her last week expressing to Tierra that she she was like, "How do you know if you're a lesbian?" You know, stuff like that. And I'm like. So you you're really considering this then? I don't think Meanwhile, so. you still have your situation with Jake. It's like uh, you got to get it together, make up your mind, be t- decisive. It's it's. I know youth can cloud your judgment a little bit. I don't but... think her judgment is clouded. I just think she's whatever she needs to be at the moment she needs to be. It. And so yeah, I think she she's fluid. Yeah, and I think yeah. she's and because they're so young, I think she's still trying to figure it out. Yeah, but don't get people involved in thinking that oh, y'all in a relationship and exclusive. Right. Jake, exactly. Jake, Brittany, I mean, it's it's a mess. I mean, yeah. it's it's a mess all the way around because she's supposed to be have a boyfriend. And this stuff with Brittany is a mess because she's spying on Bakari, and that's foul to be a, a sibling yeah. doing yeah. something like that. Mm. Absolutely. So I, I'm just like, I don't know, you know, what that situation is going to reveal. I'm hoping Bakari doesn't get caught up in it i'm really really hoping because it looks like all the cards are stacked against him right now Mm -hmm. and what a betrayal like that's going to be a huge betrayal you know Mm -hmm. and i think that he's somebody that's really searching for that love and that that sense of belonging and he has like it seemed like just when he found it and papa's father that was snatched from him Mm-hmm. And so maybe, you know, having the professor around as like some kind of guidance, maybe that'll help him out. But again, you don't know what's going to become of that because he's he's around a, a lot of dangerous people. And the more people you bring into your life, you put them at risk as well. Let me ask you a question. So it's like, let, dang, let, I don't know. Let me ask I, I'm, you I'm, Go ahead, Ron. Of all the people that you would least expect 
to take Duda out would be Brittany. Do you think it's possible some way that she's convinced to possibly take, maybe this whole thing with her brother, maybe this is a workaround for, for it to be her that does it. I, 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 you know, I know that the chips aren't there and, and maybe I'm stretching, but she certainly has the appearance to be the type if she had to do it. But it just... He wouldn't, get, he wouldn't I, I, trust I, her. I, I, he wouldn't I, allow her to get close enough. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if I don't even know if, if he had if he wouldn't if Picard would would know, but but it, it just seems like when I stop to think about any one of the group that can actually do it, because Duda is not a dummy. I just don't see anybody. Listen, else. the only one who really has his heart and who could do it, and I don't know that she can do it, is Tracy. Mm. He's the only yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, he's the yeah. only one that can get close enough to him to get his guard down. Yeah, but, but Tracy, yeah. is Tracy is Tracy a killer? Unless she lures him to the spot and then somebody else does it, yeah. because he's the she's the only one he will let his guard down to. Yeah, I don't see I don't see Tracy having that in her. But again, no. she is very close with Vic too, and we know she cares a great deal about Vic. And so yeah. maybe I don't know if if she feels like it's worth the gamble and, and that it could save Vic. Vic say to her, like, listen, he got to go. He's caused all this hurt. And he killed Q. And Q is the father of her child. Yep. Yep. That's what they say. I circle, circle back like, hey, connect the dots. All, all these, look how many people he's impacted. Look at the people mm -hmm. like his dad died. All, all this other stuff. And just and just say, he, he's got to go. He got to go. I like that. And so I'm like, Tracy is the only one to get close enough. And she can invite him over, have a drink, give him some poison, take him out. That's the only way I could see it happening. I, I know it wouldn't be anything more. more or violent. get him to yeah. the spot. Could, could there <laughs> be a scenario where maybe Otis doesn't die, but he actually goes to jail? Like they set him up somehow. Because I think that that would be way more likely, you know, mm -hmm. and it would keep everybody's hands clean for the most part. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know the judicial system, even in Chicago. You know, the the, the they can be guilty as all you know what, but they'll let them out in a year and six months for whatever reason, and they're back at it again. So you get I I wouldn't trust the look for Duda. No, nah, I wouldn't trust the judicial system. He's got to be six feet. No, I don't know. But the feds, I mean, Duda feds. also has a lot of political enemies too. From when he was. Was you know uh, in politics? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's possible you know they mm -hmm. got all the pool politically now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that, that I like that that thought that it could go that way. Uh, yeah. yeah, and plus Jim Jim's dad never you know press charges and stuff like it's all these things. It's mm -hmm. all these things that are you know these ties that they can use to take, um, you know take him down, and we don't know like. Alicia, you know, she she's, you know, she has dirty ties, but she seemed to also be like a really, um, you know, she has a reputable, you know, reputation and stuff. And I bet you she has some political connections and stuff. She has money oh, yeah. and everything and stuff. So I I can see them trying to uh, rope a dope. And we'll see how good <laughs> of a lawyer uh, um, Leon's character is. Right. Yeah. I'm excited to see what he does on the show. <laughs> I can see if 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 uh, Duda goes to jail, yeah, he probably would get shanked a couple of days after he got there. Um, you know, I can definitely see that because, as you said, Alicia's got ties all over the place. Um, you know, and uh, Gemma's dad has ties, so yeah, I can see that getting inside and taking Duda out that way. Uh, but I don't know because, for the most part, Duda doesn't get his hands dirty, with the exception of that automobile now. That automobile is is a, you know, what does Vic do? Does he become a snitch? Does he lay it out to the fans and say, okay, this is what, this is the deal. You you keep me out of jail and I'll tell you who did what. He gets his hands dirty because he's on tape beating Gemma's dad half to death. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they just ain't, they just ain't used the tape. Well, so he and, does get his hands dirty. They didn't, well, like, 
But yeah, but see, Gemma's dad has to press charges, and because he didn't press charges, or I don't even know if he will. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, but, the, the hey. state might do it. The, the right. thing is, don't forget. They, he killed Reg too. But look, look, I would look. You the, gotta say look, dirty then. But look, the feds, I can see the feds saying, okay, you you know, Vic, you're not the fish we're looking for. We want the big fish. Yep. So if you can lay, if you can give us something, we can protect you. You know, we'll we'll keep you out of jail if you can give us something. And to give up Duda for that murder. That might be what it takes. Listen, they can get Duda. If they can tie Duda into not just the Q murder, if they can circle back on the Brandon situation. I'm sure he knows a little bit about that, too. Uh, that's what I said. If, you know, because, he, yeah, he had Brandon killed. He killed Brandon. So I'm just saying, like, there's things. If they if they can get him and rope him up. Yeah. They, any number of things like he got a yeah. lot up against him so it, it could go real bad for Otis real quick <laughs> mm -hmm. um you know yeah. I think that the community is collectively tired of him yeah and so when you have that many enemies and people against you that want you to be out of their hair take them down because he really is ruining a lot of lives mm -hmm. you know I think that it's very likely that this is his last season as either a free man or as a living man. <laughs> I, I can see it, you know, coming to a screeching halt for that for uh, Otis's character. I'm not a snitch, but if it were me, I'd be drawing all kinds of X's and O's toward Duda. I mean, I'd be a parakeet. I mean, you you singing? Oh God, I sing you a song that you would never forget. <laughs> Now, did you also hear um, Quincy, the um, campaign manager, his boyfriend, who is the real estate agent, he was kind of mentioning, you know, oh, but Duda, he's like a father to me. You know, he was saying something. And I was like, yeah. OK, here you are trying to play Superman. Like, you don't know Duda like the rest of them do. You don't know nothing about this man. If you if that's what you think of him. So, I thought that was interesting. I still think that boyfriend mm -hmm. is going to be a problem. I think he's soon going to find so out. So I'm, I'm just waiting to see if he's going to get down mm -hmm. or lay down. I, I think he soon will find out just what Duda is all about. Just for the mere fact he said that. I, I think yeah. we'll see very soon that he's going to find out what Duda is all about. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Being naive. Yeah. Yeah. Very naive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, I really enjoyed this episode. I like how they're setting up the characters. I like the introduction of the new characters. Um, I think that this is making for a very interesting second half for the season. Um, I also thought it was funny how they kind of addressed the age old question that constantly seems to pop up on social media about, you know, how couples and gender roles in the household and stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I was like uh you know I thought that Quincy answered perfectly like do what works for your house don't okay. worry about exactly. what society gotta say exactly so question are we gonna see Dre this uh uh this season I mean I, I like I think Dre comes back okay. I think she will too I know she's doing both she's filming force and everything but you know she might like you said T might find out that the grass ain't green on the other side and she might come back to Nina and see if they can reconcile. I can see that happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, and um, we didn't get to see Papa this episode, but yeah, I'm still really interested in seeing what Papa has going on and how he's going to turn out because he's, like I said, he seems like he's on the right track and he's, you know, mostly keeping it together after losing his dad, but that was a big loss for him. And especially being that they didn't end on the best of terms. Mm -hmm. I know he's still going to be grieving that. So I'm, I'm really interested to see where Papa's character goes to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any nominations for who can get the hands? I always do that. Uh, uh, <laughs> always. Always do that. Uh, and let me see, yeah. is there anybody else? Well, you know, I was thinking... I want to give it to Gemma because I'm like, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gemma, your mind. Gemma can get the hands. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely, definitely. And you know, last week I felt like, and I, um, I probably should have mentioned or even given her honorary mention with Deja what she said about um, 
about shop when she said mm. this is like it for lowering my standards. <laughs> yeah, I get you know what? That's perfect. She gets the hand. <laughs> Same time, I was like, That's a shot. I kind of went yeah. that, that was a gut punch when I heard yeah. her say it. So I was like, She should have gotten the hands for that comment. Well, she mm. should have hit the hands too, even for that comment. And then when you know, Shad went and poured his heart out to her, and she said, I loved you once. I mean, what okay, so your, your love can just go away that quick. So I'm she's like, hurt, yeah. he's hurt. Listen, listen, he he texted, he was. Pouring out his heart to another woman in a text to her. So I got it. I, I mean, got it. I got it. Listen, got it. listen. You, listen you, can't, you can't expect the woman to just open arms, welcome back with open arms, just like no, that. But, I, I, but listen to him. I mean, you know, you you just I, I could I, look. Let me look at the danger that this man is now in with Alicia. I mean, the whole reason he Alicia don't know that. Well, no, no, that. no, she mm -hmm. doesn't know that. But my, my whole point being is. Had Deja, you know, at least gave him a minute of conversation, maybe he, but now he's tied up with Alicia and Alicia's <laughs> playing some serious mind games with this brother. Listen, <laughs> Deja, I think, I think Alicia is, he's probably, he might enjoy himself over there with at Alicia. Yeah. I'm sure he will. Minute, for a hot minute. And then, <laughs> and then it's like the devil. He's going to come calling. And when he does. <laughs> You know what I thought was really funny too is how when they were sitting down in the, the at the table talking and Marcus was kind of like asking the question like oh what happened with you and Deja <laughs> and he's explaining that he completely skated around what really happened because he didn't want to say what happened with Tierra right <laughs> no he did say so, he was uh uh he had accidentally uh, he, he did not say, say it was Tierra you know Marcus is dating Tierra no he did say that didn't he. No, he no, said he that didn't say her Vic. name. He said he was texting somebody. He did not say. Remember, he in the conversation with Vic, he came clean about sleeping yeah, with Tierra. Okay. Right, right. But right. in the conversation with Marcus, he was like, "Oh no, it's just that you know there was an imbalance of power in the right. relationship." Yeah, because that's the thing. If he's he can't tell Marcus who it is, Marcus is dating Tierra right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. you're right. You're right. I'm wondering when the truth come out and. It, I feel like it's going to. Well, maybe he needs to stay over there with, with uh, Alicia. Cause if that <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Listen, living in a lap of luxury. Uh -huh. yeah. He's a cougar. Yeah. <laughs> and she got yeah. goosies. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she got a jailbird. <laughs> he got reinforcement with her. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I don't know. I think that, yeah, like, this has a very good recipe for success this season. The, the, all the stuff that different avenues that we can explore with our theories and stuff like that. And, you know, not to mention the different characters that kind of have to dig themselves out of their issues that they're in, you know, so I, I'm really interested to see where things go. Loving mm -hmm. it so far. Um, really enjoyed this episode. Now, do you guys have somebody who you want to give the game ball to? Hmm. I was thinking, you know, Professor, he can definitely get the game okay. ball to me. Yeah, because he's kind of taking oh, yeah. in this, taking in Bakari. He's not even in his class. He has no yeah. obligation to Bakari, and he's still trying to be helpful. Yes. I, 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 yes. I agree with that. I go with that because, I mean, you know, that's another thing that we touched on during the interview with Luke and Jacob about how the show is about community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's important. And you see that in the show and, and you know, the importance of having mentors mm -hmm. and big brothers, big sisters, folks reaching down to help and stuff. And, you know, yeah. Papa's dad did that for him. And now that mm -hmm. he's gone, for him to have another mentor or father figure. Yep. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before we go, I got another nomination for who can get the hands. It just came into my mind. Dante. How you gonna draw oh, your yeah. famous girl right in front of his face? Yeah, 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 Dante. Yeah. Dante, well, we know he that type of dude because he he was doing it with Tiff when Tiff was with Emmett. So yeah, I mean, it did it did not surprise me to see Dante. Now he that's had... the real Mr. Steal Your Girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the real Mr. Steal Your Girl. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. To all the viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you are back, back here uh, to converse with us on the next episode. Um, but 
for this one, drop in the comments and give us your thoughts about the episode, your predictions, as well as any comments you have about our interview with Luke James and uh, Jacob Lattimore. Like I said, if you haven't checked that out, please do so now. It's, it's an amazing interview. Uh, it's right over there in our, our interviews playlist where you can find a bunch of great content. Um, also, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like the video. Follow us on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all the social media platforms. We are at The Spot Real Talk on all socials. Um, and, you know, make sure you invite your friends and family, too, because, you know, we we a big family over here. You might as well <laughs> get your family to join. We can all sit around and chat together about these shows. That's right. So we got a lot of great content up our sleeves coming your way, and you're not going to miss it. So that notification bell is also going to be very important. Click that so you get alerted every time we post. And make sure you are back here, same time, same place, next week for another recap of The Shy. Guys, got anything else to go before we uh, close out? Nope. Well, predictions. We, nope. didn't, we didn't do the, predi oh. uh, the predictions uh, for the next uh, episode. I, I, I do think that uh, Vic will have a come to Jesus moment with the feds and there will be a sit down. I don't know how much he says, but I think that he's going to, I mean, theoretically, I think that saves his career possibly as well as keeps him out of jail. So that's my prediction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my prediction is, you know, Emmett figures out his price that he needs to uh, pay to buy out Duda and uh, Alicia will happily front him the money. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, he's going to maybe realize that Alicia isn't who he thinks she is. Because I, I think Emmett is kind of blind in regards to what he thinks Alicia is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I don't think it's a any amount of money that can buy Duda out can and get the bounty off his head. <laughs> so I'm just like, that ain't gonna work no way. So that, I think if anything, he and Alicia and all of them, the community gonna have to come together and figure out something out to get rid of Duda, whether it's jail or otherwise. I, I agree with that too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, you got our predictions. We'll see if we're right <laughs> next time we recap. So. Like I said, make sure you all are back here next week where we recap episode 311. Uh, on that note, I think we're going to call it a night and we'll mm -hmm. see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. I don't care about the scene. I don't care about the location. All that matters not to me. That you wherever I go, baby. I just need you by my side. Yeah. That's until the day I die Ever since you found me We the only thing I see Forever and a day is you and me And they can't replicate this you